Hey, Jimmy. Hey. Steve's in the back already. Ah, cool. Thanks. He said tonight could be a big night for you guys, so <sighs> good luck. Yeah, thank you. You know, to be honest, we've been kind of running on fumes for a while lately, so if things don't work out, you might be witnessing the final and glorious ride of the sorties. Well, listen, let me finish up this order, and I'll grab you guys a few beers on the house. What for? Just a small thank you for helping me out with that creep from the other night. If I went and broke, I'd say there's no need to thank me. So where is he? I'm sorry, Tommy, but he just skipped out with one of the cocktail waitresses. He had to make a phone call. Look, do you have a feeling one way or another? All I know with certainty is that he watched the entire set. No toilet breaks, no sexton. But these guys, they have poker faces like you wouldn't believe. You want to know what I think? I think that we showed him that rock and roll is alive and well in New Jersey. Yeah. Just remember, Steve, uh, the issue isn't whether or not rock and roll made a glorious comeback in this bar tonight. It's whether Peter Klein can make a profit. <clears throat> Sorry to keep his gun away. Uh, don't be silly, Peter. Uh, I'd like you to meet the band, uh, Jimmy, Tommy, Steve, and Rob. Sorties, uh, meet Peter Klein. Thanks. Uh, without further ado, I'll yield the floor to you. Thanks. Look, I'm not here to waste anyone's time. You fellas are talented. Strong material, catchy hooks, solid musicianship, the whole rock and roll image. It's all there. But right now, I can't take a flyer on you guys. Rock and roll isn't selling. And quite frankly, you guys aren't special enough to lead a renaissance right now. But do you think they're good enough to be part of a renaissance? Sure. I mean, that, that's a fair statement. So, so I got a little bit of advice for you. How'd you tell? Please. Okay. Just hang in there. That's it. Sorry, fellas. Uh, thanks for your time, Peter. I'll be in touch. Well, there you have it. We're not special enough. Bunch of second-rate has-beens. Well, that's one interpretation of it. Please, just cut the bullshit, Captain. Captain, what is your interpretation of it? 
you'll get your record deal if you guys can find it within yourselves to keep this group together. The last time rock and roll made a splash was 2002. Before that, it was 1991. These things are cyclical. You can do the math. Well, that's encouraging. I am sure the next Kurt Cobain is, is being born in Hackensack. Right now. Let's wait another 20 years and we can ride his coattails all the way to the top. This is stupid. I'm going downstairs to drink my face off. And if rock and roll is good for anything still, then maybe I'll get late. Nothing like the taste of disappointment to bring out the swashbuckling Tom O'Coden. Are you still here, Jimmy? What? Are you shooting, running home to write us some more hit songs, superstar? Just relax, Tommy. Hands off me. It's a surprise. Never would expect a captain to take up for Jimmy, right? I'm on the side of not saying something you're gonna regret when the sun shines on your hangover tomorrow morning. That's all. That's funny, you always thought <laughs> you were so special. And now you know. You're nobody. Nobody. Just like the rest of us. You know, I don't know when you became this guy, but I do know the sorties are done. And if you think I'm gonna forget about this by tomorrow, you're dumber than you look. How about we finish it right now then, Jimmy? Get off me. The songs are mine, Tom. And if I ever hear that you're playing in some shit bar somewhere, playing one of them, I'll see you for the shirt off your back. Well, that went well. I'm sorry, Captain. I let you down, and the truth is I let them down, too. Ah, that's soft. You're the talent. You've carried those other guys on your back for over five years. You heard Klein? Not quite special enough. You're an artist. He's a businessman. He lives and breathes markets, statistics, logarithms. Yeah, but he gets to decide what kind of car I drive. Oh, man. I won't even tell you what he drove up in. So where's it at, Captain? Good question, Jimmy. But you're not gonna like the answer. Country music. Your view's way too narrow, Jimmy. Elvis is king of rock and roll, right? Was he not country? Yeah. Okay, Johnny Cash. Okay. I know you wet yourself over the kinks. Muswell Hillbillies. Now that's a good album. Yeah, but the country on the radio today isn't like that anymore. Well, at least it's on the radio. Good night, Captain. Nashville. Um, yeah, I think it's crazy. I mean, you think that Atlantic City is the Deep South, which is kind of ironic considering mom and all. But... I love it. No one needs a fresh start more than you. What? I'm just picturing you in a cowboy hat and one of their shirts with the little arrows above the pockets. Well, don't forget the cowboy boots with the pointed toes. Oh, nice. <laughs> you want more wine? Yeah, sure. Hey, you have some country albums in your collection, don't you? Yeah, mostly classics. I've got uh, Waylon, Loretta, Dolly, there's some Willie. Cool. Uh, may need to borrow them. Mom's gifted me some over the years, but 
I think I need to broaden my horizons. Yeah, help yourself. Um, speaking of borrowing, you planning on asking mom and dad? No. Not this time. Hey, have a seat, Jimmy. Thanks. Oh, so I can't remember the last time I saw Jimmy Ford strolling through that door. This must be serious. Yeah, I'm, uh, taking your advice. I'm going to Nashville. My advice? Jimmy, I thought we were talking about markets. I didn't realize I was dispensing life-altering advice. Whatever it was, I'm going. You're crazy, but you've obviously come here to say farewell to your manager. That's part of it. And the other part? I need to borrow some money. Let me ask you something. Have you actually written any country songs since you had this epiphany of yours? Yeah, a handful. I'd like to hear a few bars of one of your new country songs. Got it all, that's what I've always thought since we began. And even now, my whole world is still in your hands. And yeah, I know sometimes couples fight, and that's just the way of things. But I don't know why when we do You think I'm gonna leave It's a good, solid song, Jimmy. Uh, it feels a little bit inauthentic, but that may be because I know your roots. Anyway, uh, it'll get you started down there at least. Cut Jimmy a check for $5,000. Oh, and uh, no Christmas bonus for you this year. With a stroke of her pen. I, I don't know what to say. Wow, that, that's very generous. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, and uh, since it seems you gobble up my advice here's one more piece keep an open mind when it comes to the sorties i'll do my best hey uh thanks for the ride and thanks for seeing me off i love you jimmy i'm really proud of you for doing this hey don't get all mushy on me now it's not your style whatever loser hey Seriously, though, this thing won't work unless you really want it to. You can't just be a, a, a rock and roller in disguise. You can't be a tourist. They'll sniff you out. I got it.
Very good. All right. Well, thank you. Here you go. Have a great day. Of course. Let me guess. New York. Uh, New Jersey. And here I thought I blended right in. This store just so happens to be a magnet for folks who think they blend right in. You probably don't see too many musicians here either, right? Never, baby. Especially ones carrying them guitar thingies. Well, if you were a desperado and not some poser like me, where would you go to find a bar with an open mic tonight? <laughs> Honey, walk through that door. Close them pretty eyes. Spin around three times saying, I'm not in the North Country no more. And voila, eight honky tonks that fit that very description will shine before you. Hmm. Oh, Thanks. and um, yeah, sure. And you, you might want to hang on to that receipt just in case that outfit ain't quite what you're looking for. Okay. Hmm. All right. Yeah. Well, hey, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Can I get you something? Yeah, I'll take the cheapest beer you got. All right, you got it. How's your night going? It's going good. How about you? Pretty good. Yeah? Yeah, I'm just trying to figure some things out. All right. I'll be five bucks. Hey, can you tell me where to sign up for the open mic? Um, yeah, with Caroline. Right over there. She does all that. Okay. Thank you. Excuse me, my name's Jimmy Ford. I'd like to get on the list for this evening. Well, well, well. Look at you. Bless your heart. Yeah, I get it. I overdid it. Can I please get on the list? Oh, I'm sorry, cowboy, but we've got all the performers we can handle right now. I don't really know how things are supposed to work around here. Can you just wink if I'm supposed to bribe you or something? I can't take your money, sweetie. But there is something you can do for me if you're so inclined. Here you go. Well, thank you very much. That's sweet. I don't mean to be a bother, but you are going to add me to the list, right? Oh, I'm sorry, cowboy, but we've got all the performers we can handle right now. Thanks. Enjoy the beer. Hold on. Don't get your panties in a twist. I'm just messing with you. Listen, I wouldn't hold my breath, but if another performer drops out, you'll be next in line. All right? You're too kind. Hey, thank y'all for listening. Y'all been great. God bless. That was Mr. J.C. Pascal. Let's hear it for him one more time. Thank you, J.C. All right, up next, we got Miss Jamie Barefoot. Y'all go ahead and give her a nice Buckhorn Saloon welcome. Everything is tasting. 
Hi, Miss Janie. Hey, Melinda. What can I get for you tonight? Well, I'm looking to have a little fun, so maybe a vodka cranberry, please. You got it. Yeah, maybe I should switch to that. Pardon me? Nothing. I'm sorry. I hope you don't mind me saying, but you look a little rough. It's a Thursday night in Nashville. You ought to have a smile on that face of yours. Nashville. I don't really know what I'm doing here. Well, you got your guitar with you, and you look like you just stepped right off the pages of Cowboy Weekly magazine. So just maybe you're here to play some country music. Yeah, well, that was my intention. Apparently, it ain't gonna happen tonight. Why's that? Is Caroline giving you a hard time? <laughs> maybe. I think it just came a little late to the party. You're welcome. Oh, grab this gentleman another bourbon on me, please. Yeah, you got it. Thanks. Jimmy Ford, by the way. Melinda Price. You're welcome. Well, hey, maybe you're just one bourbon away from your whole night turning around. Have a good one. Thanks. You too. All right, let's give a big welcome to Mr. Jimmy Ford. Now, this just happens to be his Buckhorn Saloon debut, so y'all don't go too hard on him, all right? Well, come on up, Jimmy. Hey, thanks for squeezing me in. Don't thank me, cowboy. I would have made you wait weeks. Lucky for you, you got a friend. Now get up here and play. Yes, ma'am. Hey, good evening. Uh, my name is Jimmy Ford, and I'd like to play a few songs for you. This uh, first song I'm going to play for you is a song that I wrote called uh, Why? Because I Love You.
Did you enjoy the show? So you're a somebody? Well, almost a somebody. Good for you. You sounded great. Oh, thank you. Hey, Miss Caroline over at Buckhorn said you got some real catchy songs. You have a real nice voice. <laughs> you following up on me? Don't get too excited. Just a standard follow-up. Well, I'm guessing you're the reason I was up there the other night, so I'd like to thank you for that. Maybe you'll let me buy you a vodka cranberry? Oh, I'm flattered that you remembered. But I think I'm gonna drink some whiskey tonight. Yeah, I get to drink for free around here on account of being somebody. <laughs> hey, good to know. <laughs> hey, bartender. Get two shots of whiskey? Mm -hmm. Oh, and uh, put it on her tab. I'm not quite sure what to make of you, Jimmy Ford. But you don't strike me as a nobody. Oh, I'm pretty much a nobody. Why else would I be doing these open mics a thousand miles from home? Where's home? New Jersey. Oh, so that would explain your get up from the other night. <laughs> hey, I'm real glad you got that all sorted out. Yeah, thanks, me too. Thanks. All right, cheers. Cheers. Oh, all right. Follow me. Why don't you grab that guitar over there and play me a song? All right. You know, I was traveling through New Jersey a couple years back, and I don't recall seeing a single honky-tonk. So you want to see if a poser from New Jersey can play some country music? No, sir. I want you to play me something from New Jersey. From before you decided to... Reinvent yourself down here in Nashville. Well, I'm very impressed with how perceptive you are. I prefer not to. Why's that? It's like I just got out of a bad relationship. It's mostly special when it started, but over time, it mostly turned to shit. I finally got the guts to break it off. Come on in. I'm looking all over for you. Eric, this is Jimmy Ford. Jimmy's new in town. Hey, guy. Melinda, come on. Well, not all of us have the guts to break it off. Anyway, I'll see you around, Jimmy Ford. Yeah, I'll see you. Hey, is the owner or manager around? What's in this regards to? I'd like to talk about booking some gigs here. Sorry, man. Uh, you gotta have an appointment for that type of stuff. Okay. Can I book an appointment? They don't really see people just coming off the street. That bourbon order come in that's, uh, we waiting on for Saturday? Yes, sir. About 15 minutes ago. Thank God those assholes about to drive me insane. Hey, excuse me. Are you the manager? Yes, I am. How can I help you? See, I'd like... Uh, he's a musician, uh, but he doesn't have an appointment. You gotta have an appointment. Yeah, I understand that. But your employer here said I can't schedule an uh, appointment either, so I'm confused. Look, it's... if I had five minutes for every guitar-toting wannabe walking in here wanting to be a star, I'd never get anything done. I got a bar to run. And let me tell you something. If you want to drop your demo in the mail, and I like it better than the 5,000 I have on my desk back there, then we can make an appointment. Have a nice day. Can I get you a drink? Eat shit. Hello? Hey, happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you. So, we got any big plans tonight? Of course. I am getting all dolled up for a night out in New York City with the girls. Oh, watch out, Manhattan. Sounds good. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm, I'm good. You know I can always tell when you're lying to me, right? I didn't realize that worked over the phone. Oh, it does. Yeah, well, 
Maybe you're right. But it's your birthday, and I'm not quite selfish enough to share my harrowing tales of isolation and rejection. That's very thoughtful of you, but listen to your big sister for a minute. You are an artist, Jimmy, for better or for worse. So you have an enormous ego, and you've always been a tad sensitive. Gee, thanks. See what I mean? Anyway, my point is, I'm sure that there are good things happening down there. Just be patient. Well, I do have an appointment tomorrow with a manager for a potential gig, so... There you go. Yeah, wish me luck. Have you ever waited tables before? No, but I have some experience in the food service industry. What kind of experience? I managed a deli back in New Jersey. You're a long way from home. Are you a musician? I don't even know anymore. I don't usually hire musicians. They're too unreliable. Big starry eyes and unpredictable schedules. I'm a hard worker. I'll, I'll be here on time. You won't have to worry about me. Listen, I think you're an honest guy. But I really need somebody who's waited tables before. I can do this. I know I can. Come on. Sorry. You can deny it all you want, Melinda. <laughs> but there's a sparkle in your eyes I haven't seen in ages. You know, I'd love to tell you all about it, but you got a big mouth. <laughs> Maybe. Mm -hmm. But I also got big eyes. And I see just about everything that goes on around here. And I'm guessing this has something to do with Jimmy Ford. Well, I broke it off with Eric. Good for you. Thanks. Oh, listen, Melinda, he seems like a good guy. But we've seen thousands of fresh-faced singers roll in and out of this place. Success is their anchor. Love, relationships, well, that's all stuff that happens on the way into town. Sometimes even on the way out. You just make sure Jimmy Ford ain't just another tourist before you go climbing in too deep, okay? Yes, ma'am. You're J.C. Pascal, right? That's me, the one and only. Yeah, I think I saw you play the Buckhorn Saloon a while back. Yeah, that sounds about right. I've played there quite a bit. You are? Jimmy Ford. Nice to meet you, Jimmy. You too. Let me guess, you're a singer too? I'm trying to be. Got any more boxes you need help with? I'm good, man. It's all good, thanks. Cool. Uh, Let me guess, you're moving closer to town? Not a chance. I'm actually moving back to North Carolina. I figure two years of, you know, squeaking out the rent's about my limit. Sorry to hear that. You got any advice for someone whose struggles have only just started? I've got advice. Advice of a cynic is about all I got. No matter how good you play guitar, no matter how willing you are to play gigs for absolutely nothing, there's only one secret. You got to know somebody. So do you know anybody, Mr. Jimmy Ford? That's just my... I can't sugarcoat it, Tommy. But the new guy sucks. Sure, he's got charisma. But his voice? Hmm. And that new material you're playing, mm. bad news. Yeah, I know. Okay, I'm not deaf. We're just trying that guy out. Okay, we got another guy we're looking at in Newark. So. The sorties aren't going anywhere, and I mean anywhere, without Jimmy Ford. So, you have two options. One, you can waste your precious time finding some sort of Jimmy clone. Or two, 
You can focus your energy on bringing back the real thing. Is that clear? Screw Jimmy Ford. Screw you too. Hey, can I get a bourbon? I actually make it a double and a uh, vodka cranberry. How y'all doing? Oh, hey, buddy. Where do you think you're going? Yeah, I'm here to see Melinda, and uh, you almost made me spill a drink. She's expecting me? Oh, really? Yes, sir. If you don't believe me, just tell her Jimmy Ford is here. I hope Dennis didn't rough you up too bad. He's my bass player, but he moonlights as my bodyguard. Oh, but it didn't hurt you, buddy. No worries. Will you guys excuse us for a minute, please? Sure. <sighs> Thank you. So I've been expecting you? Yeah, I don't really know. Have you? Expecting? Not exactly. Hoping you might show up somewhere? Probably. <laughs> uh, they need you up front to sign some copies of your EP, darling. Yeah, sure thing. I'll be there in a minute. <sighs> I'm sorry this keeps happening. Yeah, hey, I get it. Doring public needs you. Yeah, more like contractual obligation. You gonna stick around for the show? Yeah, I've got nothing better to do. Well, I'll meet you at the bar afterwards. Hey, uh, no more interruptions? No more interruptions. <clears throat> so, uh, Tell me about yourself. <laughs> well, my daddy was a session man for some pretty big time country artists. Yeah, he knew just about everybody in town. He used to bring me around from time to time, treat me like a princess. <laughs> he was also a horrible drunk. Treated my mom like shit. He finally left for good when I was about 13. Anyway, seems like I was always meant to be in Nashville. I'm supposed to be a country singer. My dad was a dentist. <laughs> Believe it or not, my mom is from a small town in North Carolina called Youngsville. Mm -hmm. uh, she had singing aspirations of her own. But a uh, smooth-talking dental student from Hackensack, New Jersey, <laughs> came out, swept her off her feet. She moved up north, became a devoted housewife, mother to me and my sister, and the rest is history. Hmm. So who are you, Jimmy? That's a good question. I guess if I'm honest, I'm a failed singer-songwriter and rhythm guitar player of a failed rock band called The Sorties. Interesting. So is yours a tale of self-pity or redemption? I don't quite get what you're asking me. Why Nashville? Why not Nashville? Listen, I like you, Jimmy Ford. And I want to help you find whatever it is you're looking for. I just need you to answer something for me real quick, all right? Sure. Is this all for real? Are you for real? Yeah, Melinda. I'm for real. All right, then. <laughs> well, 
this is my apartment. I just had this uh, horrible image of that Eric guy popping out behind those bushes wearing uh. camo and carrying a rifle. <laughs> Any chance that's going to happen? No, sir. I kicked his ass to the curb. That's good. Because I probably would have taken my chances anyway. So the record company is having a get together for local up and coming artists next Thursday night. I'd like for you to be my date. You make some good connections too. What do you think? Sounds great, but uh, you haven't even heard me play. Ooh, confession time. I sort of asked Miss Caroline to let me know next time you were playing an open mic. So I may or may not have been watching you from the shadows the other night. <laughs> wow. I, uh, Never took you for the desperate stalker type. <laughs> Seriously. Thank you for the invite. And, um, I'm honored. Perfect. Well, good night. Yeah, you too, Melinda. It isn't Jimmy Ford himself. Alive and well in Dixieland. How the heck are you? Interesting timing, Captain. Oh, yeah? Why is that? Wait, I know. You've made a gigantic splash in Nashville, and you're just about to wire me five grand. Plus interest. Yeah, something like that. I'm just yanking your change, Jimmy. Seriously. You doing okay? Yeah, I'm doing okay. Good. Well, listen, I'll get right to it. In case you've got a bull riding competition or something to attend. Now, this is very preliminary, but uh, a little birdie told me about a few British rock and roll bands causing quite a stir over the pond. A few uh, big wigs have apparently started round tabling a next British invasion type marketing strategy. You follow? So far. Good. Now, again, very preliminary, but the uh, there's probably going to be a need for some up and coming bands this side of the Atlantic to support them on tour across the United States. Yeah. What's what's the bottom line, Captain? Uh, I'm confused, Jimmy. I thought this was good news. Listen, I appreciate the call. Thanks for not giving up on me, but I'm all done dealing in what ifs and maybes. What are you talking about? This business is what ifs and maybes. And if you think Nashville isn't all about that, then maybe... <laughs> I'm not a fool, Captain, but I'm trying my damnedest to move on from the sorties, and you probably should, too. Understood. Just don't knock up any southern bells in case this thing pans out, okay? Yeah, you take it easy, Captain. Nice 
Well, just when you thought there wasn't anyone else to meet, here are two of the most important gentlemen in the entire room. I'd like to introduce you to Mr. Clifton Bass. He's the senior vice president of the A&R department. Jimmy Ford, very nice to meet you, sir. Good to meet you, Jimmy. And Mr. Kenneth Birds, the head of artist development. Pleasure to meet you. Melinda has been singing your praises, Jimmy. Apparently, you're more than just some vacuous trophy date. Vacuous? Definitely not. Trophy date? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Jimmy, uh, Melinda's been with us for a number of years now. We've really grown to trust her judgment, and uh, she seems to think you're a very talented artist. And of course, that twinkle in her eye suggests that she is perhaps somewhat biased. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, we're always interested in surrounding ourselves with talent, so if you're ever interested in stopping by to see what we do, maybe to discuss what we potentially could do for you, we'd be happy to set that up. Wow. Thank you. I really appreciate the offer. You have a manager? Uh, no, sir. I'm managing myself. Here's my card. If you're not too busy, call my secretary early next week and uh, she'll put something on the calendar. I definitely will. Thank you. All right. Now you're going to have to excuse us. Our severely undersexed wives are out there somewhere, hammered and surrounded by fresh-faced country singers. Uh -oh. Good luck with that. <laughs> See you soon, Jimmy. Very nice to meet you. Good to see you. Nice to meet you. Have a good night. Well, how about that, huh? Hey, I don't know what to say, Melinda. You don't have to say anything, Jimmy. Just take me home. I know I can be the most Hard to get along with person sometimes But even so You never let go After everything you're still by my side So thank you for loving me baby Without you I know I'd go crazy I know I'm not always the man that you need but I'm trying to be so thank you for loving me so honestly what did you think I think it's great. But? Uh, there are no buts, Jimmy. I'm just jealous. Jealous? That's an ironic twist considering you're about to conquer Nashville and all. <laughs> Why are you jealous? Well, I've only written five songs in my entire life. The record company let me record two of them with the help of an entire team of producers. Those are probably collecting dust in a vault somewhere, which is just about where they belong. <laughs> and then you come in, and in two hours, you write a melody and a lyric that will stick with me for days. You're a natural songwriter. I want to be a Loretta, Jimmy but I'm not. So instead, I'll just keep smiling and singing meaningless songs about bad boys and pickup trucks. <laughs> Look, Melinda. You're a star. You light up every room you walk into. Just keep doing what it is that you're doing. You'll be able to sing any song you want to. Is that so? Yeah. If you're here to tell me to screw off again, I can do without it. Okay. 
I deserve that. You were right, okay? We can't do it without Jimmy. I anticipated you might find yourself feeling that way. Just so happens, I telephoned Jimmy a short while back with some potentially good news for the band. What news? We'll get to that. More importantly, however, Jimmy's still a tad bitter about how things went down. You need to suck it up and mend that fence. ASAP. Yeah. But do I have to mean it? Tommy, that's between you and your maker. All right, Mr. Ford, I'll see you now. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. So, Kenneth and I got to brainstorming about how to best bring you into the fold. And we came up with a short-term plan that we believe will give you some much-needed Nashville experience while helping us plug a hole that needs plugging. That's right. The rhythm guitarist for one of our up-and-coming artists just got recruited by one of the big boys to go out on a national tour. And he also provided some backing vocals. There'd be a lot of gigging here in Nashville, get a lot of exposure for yourself, start building a name, and uh, of course, most importantly, we'll be writing you checks. And after you've been doing that for a while, if all goes well, we can discuss getting you some solo gigs. Now, how does all that sound? It sounds great. Look, I'm not trying to shoot myself in the foot here, but don't you guys need to hear me play first? <laughs> well, yes, of course we do. So before you leave today, we're going to set you up with a thick binder with a set list in it. Take that home and commit it to memory. We'll set up a session with the band for sometime early next week. And you'll get a chance to show us your chops. Hey, I assure you, I'll be ready. Well, we're kind of counting on it. And if we like what we see, we'll sit down and iron out all the nitty-gritty details. Hey, I really appreciate you guys. Now, taking... hold up, Jimmy. We haven't even told you the best part. The opening is in Melinda's band. Wow. I didn't see that coming. You don't see that as a problem, do you, Jimmy? No, sir. Does Melinda know yet? No, we wanted to meet with you first. We'll reach out to her later this afternoon. But um, I don't reckon she'll object, Jimmy. How's it going? Okay, well, don't keep me in suspense. How did it go? I'm guessing you haven't spoken to Clifton or Kenneth yet. No. Oh. Well, it looks like I'm gonna get a shot at a steady gig. Ah, rhythm guitar for a local artist. Are you serious? Oh, yeah. my God, that's awesome. Who's the artist? Uh, one of the labels up and comers. No, I know that, Jimmy, but who? Shit. Uh, I gotta take this. Uh, give me a minute. Oh, you're good. Stay. Uh. Hello. Hey, Jimmy. It's Tom. Yeah, what's up? What? Well, I've been trying real hard to get in touch with you. Man, I'm, I'm glad you finally decided to pick up. Yeah, I picked up, so what's up? All right, listen. I said some horrible things last time we spoke. But look, you, you got to believe me when I say that I didn't mean any of it. Well, I was feeling sorry for myself, man. Anyway, look. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry, and I hope you can forgive me. Why now? Why are you reaching out now? I just need some time to sort things out, man. But I'm, I'm in a real good place now. We've known each other for a long time, Jimmy. Shit, we used to be, we used to be good friends, right? I mean, I, I miss all that. Yeah, well, thanks for reaching out, and I accept your apology, Tom. 
I'm sorry, too. I guess we all sort of lost our way there at the end. That's exactly right. Exactly. By the way, you haven't spoken to Captain recently, have you? Crap, look, uh, I'm sorry, man. My boss is, is calling on the other end. I hate to cut this short, but I gotta jump. Okay, we'll, we'll, talk, we'll talk real soon, though, okay? Yeah, sure. All right, talk to you later. Bye. Just got off the phone with Clifton. One of the labels up in commerce, huh, Jimmy? I can't believe you didn't tell me it was my band, you loser. That might be the best news I've gotten all year. All right, so you don't think it's strange that they're pairing us together? Maybe a little. But hey, welcome to Nashville, Jimmy Ford. All right, you guys all set up and ready? Yes, sir. Jimmy, are you ready? I'm ready. All right, then. Let's hear, here I am. Got it. Oh, thank you. Here I am. Let's do it. Count us in. I'm sure you're wondering why we called you in here today, Jimmy. Yeah, sure. Well, everyone's been real impressed with everything that you've done. And uh, Kenneth and I agree it's time to set you up with some shows of your own. We're thinking you could play a few of your originals, mixed in with the standards. How does that sit with you? Wow. That's phenomenal. Hey, I really appreciate the opportunity. I won't let you down. <laughs> well, for now, we'd like for you to continue with Melinda, too. It'll give you some credibility as you start to move out in front. Hey, you know, whatever it takes. You guys ready? All set, Jimmy. She was as bright as the sun, nothing short of perfect. Waited tables at a diner all through 21. She showed him more love than he knew one person could give. She 
was the reason that he had to live. Now she's the reason he drinks. She's the reason he smokes. She's the reason that he does not. Standards so high that no one else can come close. Now she's the reason he drinks. She's the reason he smokes. What the hell are you two doing here? Whoa, Jimmy. Take it easy. What the hell's your problem? I'm no moron. You're here because Captain sent you. Because for some reason, he just can't let go of the sorties. You know, maybe it's time to fire a manager of a band that doesn't exist anymore. What do you think? You're right. Captain sent us. You know, Captain cares a lot for you, Jimmy. Always thought of you like family. He feels bad for what happened with the band. He wants to make it up to us. How? By keeping us trapped in the past with false hope? You think we came all this way for some make-believe bullshit, Jimmy? Come on. So you came all this way to apologize to my face this time? Damn it, Jimmy. Captain ironed out a record deal with Peter Klein. A couple of studio albums, exclusive touring. Mm -hmm. You get your writing royalties, the works. That's what we've been working for, man. Rock and roll fantasy come true. We got a shot of being something, part of something huge here, man. We can't do it without you. Hey, you ready to take off? Yeah, um, just give me one minute to wrap up over here, right? Yeah, sure thing. I'll just, um, say goodnight to the guy. Thanks. Wow. Good for you, Jimmy. Listen, I'm sorry I jumped down your throats. I get why you're here. It's just your timing couldn't be any worse right now. Right, right. Look, man, all we're doing is asking you to think about it. That's all. How long are you in town for? Till Sunday morning. We should get some drinks tomorrow night. But only if you promise me it's not going to be an infomercial. Think we can handle that? Yeah, sure. Oh, and uh, not for nothing, Jimmy, but you're pretty good tonight. Thanks, man. You are all right. You're better with the sorties. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I'll call you tomorrow. Can I ask you something? Sure. Who are those two guys you were talking to at the end of the night? That's a good question. Unfortunately, there's no easy answer. What's going on? They were my bandmates from the sorties. I didn't know they were coming, but when I saw them, I knew why they were here. And why is that? I'm trying to get you back? Yeah. They want to bring me back. But there's more. Our old manager negotiated a record deal with a big label, and it's not going to work unless I'm in. And you didn't know about any of this until tonight? I knew they were pushing for it. I just never really thought it would happen. <sighs> That's a heck of a thing to keep from me. I don't even know what to say. Are you leaving? Are you just another tourist? No. I'm not leaving. It was the past. It was never as good as what I've got going on right now. I thought Captain was gonna kill you. I'd never seen him so angry. <laughs> what, what do you expect? You leave the motor running on, on a mint condition 78 Corvette, right? Oh, it was his baby. 
a good thing he always had a soft spot for you. Yeah, soft spot or not, he didn't talk to me for weeks. <laughs> we had a blast back then. It felt like we owned New Jersey. Yeah, I did. You know, and then it could be that way again, Jimmy. Except this time we can actually have some real money in our pockets. Hmm? Yeah, I thought we agreed. No infomercials. Come on, Jimmy, what? You hold my life in your hands, man. You hold, you hold Steve's life in your hands. How do you expect us not to bring it up? Forget about us. What about you? Don't you want this? Isn't this what you've always wanted? I thought so. But I've got something going down here. Something I've never had before. <laughs> to be the prank here. But I'm... <clears throat> I'm sorry, Jimmy. What, what exactly do you have going for you? I mean, you, you got a gig at the local honky-tonk? Yeah, it's just the beginning. Right. Right, no. As long as you keep riding the coattails of your up-and-coming girlfriend. Tom. Mmm. <laughs> That's a good plan, huh? I gotta give it to you, Tom. You've always known where to throw your jabs. Jimmy. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just teasing with you, man. Come on. My answer's no. Safe travels. Hey, come on, Jimmy. Can I bum one of those off you? Thanks. Hey, can you answer something for me? If I'm able. You've been in the game a long time. A long, long time. I bet you've seen a lot of performers come and go. Some deserving and some not so deserving, right? Jimmy, Nashville's a revolving door. I just sit back, play my bass guitar, watch it all spin around. Look. Am I the punchline of an inside joke? I'm not sure I know what you mean. Well, how do I put this then? Am I Jimmy Price? Oh, shit. Why are you asking me this? Jimmy, I think you're a good guy. I think you got a lot going for you. But? Melinda Price is going to be a genuine superstar one of these days. And those jackasses at the record company would personally spit shine her boots. <sighs> They thought it meant she'd stick with them. Now, will you answer something for me? You yeah, all right? Why the hell do you care? I mean, can you look me in the eye and honestly tell me it ain't never crossed your mind that date Melinda Price might benefit your career too? That's what I thought. Now, I'm gonna go inside, wrestle my own demons with another shot of whiskey. Good night, Jimmy. Good night. We can get down to business. What's on your mind, Jimmy? Yeah, I'd like to discuss my future. All right, then. Let's discuss your future. For a few short months, I'll scrounge around Nashville for $25. And 
Now I'm playing rhythm guitar from Melinda Price, and I'm headlining the Buckhorn. So you must think I've got what it takes to make it in this town. Well, you're doing great by all accounts, Jimmy, but um, I still think it may be a little premature to make that kind of call. Yeah, that's understood. It's just, I've been paying my dues for such a long time that I really a feel A long like time? Jimmy, I hardly think that a few short months qualifies as a long time. I spent 10 years slogging through every bar in New Jersey, New York, and Pennsylvania, just trying to break through. Look, that, that's all I mean. We appreciate that, Jimmy. I mean, believe me, we really do. Because all that seasoning, it, it shines through when you're on stage. But uh, this is Nashville, son. This is Nashville. So I'd like you to give me a record deal. Son, come back to us in a couple years and talk to us about a record deal. Good Lord. Come on, fellas. Who knows if I'm even going to be dating Melinda in a couple years? I'm sorry. I, I don't understand what that's got to do with anything. Oh, really? Yeah, because I think you do. I think you and Kenneth put on this little charade to keep your bright and shining star happy. Now, calm down, Jim. Now, look me in the eye and tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> you stupid son of a bitch. Melinda came to us. Melinda asked us to make you her rhythm guitarist. She asked us to make you a headliner at the Buckhorn Saloon. And yes, we did it to keep our bright, shining star happy. Look, um, Jimmy, I'm willing to forget this conversation ever happened. We could just finish up our lattes just like gentlemen, and you can go home and prepare for tomorrow night's show with the Buckhorn Saloon. What do you say? Come in. Hey, Jimmy. What's going on here? What do you mean? I haven't seen you in two days. You haven't returned any of my phone calls. I don't know what to tell you. Okay, look. I don't want you to resent me, Jimmy. I care about you too much for that. So why don't you go back to New Jersey and sign that record deal? Okay, I'm leaving. So what's your counteroffer? Counteroffer? What are you talking about? My rock and roll fantasies are a pen stroke away. So I'm getting greedy. I'm not even sure what we're negotiating anymore. Really? Because I had a really interesting conversation with Clifton and Kenneth yesterday, and it appears in my surprising new career in Nashville, it's been a total sham. And to top it all off, you're the person behind it. Okay, hold on a second. I know I should have been honest with you about all that stuff, and I'm sorry. I am. But you're making it seem like all this was part of something ugly, and it wasn't. I was trying to help you. I wanted to make you happy. What make me stay? You know what would really make me stay? A record deal right here in Nashville. You go give me one of those, then I'll stay. Okay. Wait, I forgot. Not even you, Melinda Price, can make that happen, can you? Okay, you're being a real asshole right now. Where was all this self-righteous indignation when I first introduced you to Kenneth and Clifton, huh? And what now? That you thought you were the one in control, you were the one using me, everything was totally fine. You know what? Oops. Looks like it's time for me to hit the stage with your bandmates. It's gonna be a great show. Just stick around. Hey, good evening and welcome to the Buckhorn Saloon. Tonight's a very special night and you're all in for a real treat. Tonight's gonna be my last performance in Nashville. But I'm not singing. I'm not even playing my guitar. Nope. Tonight's gonna be a magic show because I'm disappearing from Nashville. But don't worry, somebody very special is gonna appear in my place. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the one, the only, Miss Bad Boys and Pickup Trucks herself, Miss Melinda Price. Hey, Melinda, come on down. Join your band. Hey, you may not know this, but I've been playing rhythm guitar for Melinda these past few months. Hey, by a show of hands, who here thinks they have the chops to play rhythm guitar in her band? Hey, you. 
The brown hat. Come on up. Hey, don't freeze up on me now, cowboy. It's real easy. Anybody can do it. Trust me. Here you go. Now it's official. Enjoy the show, everybody. Y'all ready to hear some music? This doesn't feel right. You're not supposed to be back here, Jimmy. You're wrong. This is exactly where I'm supposed to be. I hear the words coming out of your mouth, but I can't ever remember you being as happy as you were these past couple of months. Don't you get it? It wasn't real. And this is real? Come on, Jimmy. A few months ago, the sorties weren't going anywhere. You couldn't even stand to look at your bandmates, and you desperately wanted a fresh start. Now you're ready to jump back into all of that? If I'm not too late already, there's a record deal on the table. I'm sick of being a nobody. I'm sick of being broke. I'm finally getting what I deserve. You know what? Maybe you are. Damn it, Kelly. The last thing in the world I need right now is for you to be giving me a hard time. You are acting like an insecure child, Jimmy. I can't just sit here and watch you repeat the same mistakes over and over again. So don't. Jimmy Ford, back from his self-imposed exile. How the hell are you? Please just tell me I'm not too late. You're not too late. That's a big relief. I thought I might have screwed it all up. Like I would ever let that happen. All right, well, let's get this done. Do you have time to review the terms of the deal with me? Uh, it's a little premature for that, Jimmy. We still need to work out some of the details. Details? All right, I'm confused. Steve and Tom made it sound like I just had to come up here and sign my name to a contract. And that's not what I'm getting from you. How close are we? We're closer than we've ever been. That is a bullshit answer. How close are we? Closer than we've ever been, Jimmy. Here's a check for the money I owe you. Take it. This concludes our business together. 
Oh, come on. You're a smart guy. You know these things are never done until they're done. So long, Captain. Chris. Yeah. Yeah, it's Jimmy Ford. Yeah, it has been a long time. Hey, you still interested in my stuff? That sounds great. And bring the cash. It. What about that? That guitar? Man, that's been my songwriting partner for 10 years. It's not for sale. Look, I don't want to be a dick or anything, but I said everything. You know what? You take it, man. Hello, Melinda. You're looking as lovely as ever. Oh, thank you, sir. Thanks for coming on short notice. You know we appreciate it. Of course. Let's go back in my office so we can talk a little bit. Cool. So what's all this about, boss? Well, Melinda, you've been with us for a long time now. I remember when you were skipping up and down those halls with your daddy. <laughs> and we've always thought the world of you. It's very sweet. You know, I've always thought the world about you guys, too. Well, good, because we want to keep you around for a long time. But, um, I'm a little worried that, um, you may not be completely satisfied with the direction that your career is taking right now. I don't know if I know what you mean. Well, level with me. I know that you aspire to be more than just another fun-loving country girl. That you want to sing songs with substance, you know? That you want to be taken seriously. I can't deny any of that. I want that more than anything. 
But why are we talking about this now? Because now I have an album full of songs that were written just for you. And I think they're exactly what you're looking for. And if you decide to record them, we're going to stand behind you 100%. There's got to be a button there somewhere. But people expect a certain sound from you now. And these songs, they ain't that sound. So there's some risk involved for you and for us. But Melinda, these songs, they're strong. They're real strong. So if you're willing to take the risk, we are too. All right, well, when do I get to hear these songs? I've got something set up for tomorrow. Asshole. It's good to see you too. I don't know whether to hug you or punch you in the face. You can do both. How's a good one? What have you been doing for the past three months? I just had to disappear so I could sort some things out. Did it work? I don't know yet. But Melinda once asked me a question. It kept bouncing around in my head over and over again. Is yours a tale of self-pity or redemption? My honest answer up until three months ago would have been self-pity. And now? <laughs> Kicking the tires on redemption. So... What do you think of the new songs? Well, I think they deserve the best I got, and I plan on giving it to them. Sounds to me like you're ready to move forward with this project. There's no doubt in my mind. So when do I get to meet this amazingly talented songwriter? He's out on the road right now. We'll arrange a meeting as soon as he gets back in town. Let's do it one more time, boys. Uh, from the top. Well, this type of agreement isn't necessarily complicated to draw up, but I wouldn't typically advise clients to enter into it in the first place. I mean, you understand what you'd be giving up. Yes, and I, I appreciate your legal expertise, but I really want this done. Well, are the exhibits I asked you to bring in that envelope? Yes, ma'am. Here you are. I wasn't quite sure I'd ever see you again. Not that it really matters anymore, but... Was it all a big lie? Only the important stuff. I know. I'm so sorry. Can you find it in your heart to forgive me? I'm gonna choose to believe that you did what you did because you care so deeply for the sorties. So yeah, I forgive you. I do love the sorties, Jimmy. And I know I lied to, and that may truly be unforgivable. But man, I really was closer than ever to getting a record deal done for you boys. Do you think you can get that close again? Just stay in touch, all right? You got it. You know, if it were Tommy and Steve that wrecked my Corvette, I'd have murdered them, right? Huh? I know. Hey, there's one last thing you should know. In the spirit of full disclosure, 
We told Steve the same lies that we told you. We figured uh, you wouldn't believe us anymore, so we brought him in for credibility's sake. He's an innocent. Well, in the spirit of full disclosure, I kind of figured it was you and Tommy. We're all here. You want to tell us why we're here? No, this divorce has been ugly. And that's why I asked you here. I want to apologize, but not because I don't want to be in the band anymore. Because I've been a real shit. I can't argue with that. I held you guys hostage for way too long. All the songs I wrote, they were for the band. You three played them in so many shitholes so many times. They belong to you two. That's kind of you to say, man. <laughs> you yeah, are a little beyond sentimentality now, don't you think? I'd say so. That's why I had my attorney prepare an agreement. You guys can keep all the songs I wrote for the sorties and even record them. I already spoke to Captain. He's primed and ready to go, so... Go find yourselves a charismatic frontman and get the deal done with Peter Klein. I don't know what to say. I, this is a real classy move. I, thank you. You don't need to thank me. And the reason that we did the things we did doesn't matter anymore. It's about tomorrow. Right, right. But you still get to make out like the hero in all this, don't you? Just ignore him. So what's next for Jimmy Ford? It's complicated. Well, this feels a little like deja vu. <laughs> and what do I say now? I love you and I'm very proud of you. Now you say... I love you too. And thank you. For everything. Jimmy Ford. Thank you. Hey, Clifton. You joined us for a beer? I'd love to join you for a beer, but if I don't get home to supper, my wife's gonna shoot me. Mm. Well, then to what do we owe the occasion? Well, I thought you might want to know we submitted Let You Walk Away to all the local radio stations. Every single one of them had the same reaction. You've got a hit single on your hands. <laughs> did you hear that, Dennis? I sure did. Some of us bigwigs are going to get together tomorrow for lunch and discuss logistics, and then I'll brief you on how we're going to roll this out. Are you sure you don't want to stick around for one celebratory drink? I gotta go. But listen, your songwriter's back in town, and he may stop by for a drink. It's about damn time you showed up. Uh, surprise, surprise, the old ball and chain. I gotta go. Right. I'll talk with you See again, you. Dennis. Cheers. Excuse me. Melinda Price? Yes, sir. That's me. Well, good. Clifton Bass said you'd be here. You must be the musical genius who wrote all them songs I've been singing. I oh, just now, have to... Now, hold up. I can honestly say I've never written a song in my entire life. I'm Michael Floyd. I just so happen to be the manager of the man you're looking for. Oh. Well, I hope you don't mind, but he wanted to meet you upstairs so he could have some privacy. All right, sure. Um, I'll be right back. 
Jimmy Ford. I knew it was you. Is that okay? That depends. Did you really write all those songs just for me? Yeah, I did. Why? Because if anybody deserves the best of what I've got, it's you. Good answer. I need you to agree to something for me. And there's absolutely no room for negotiation. Anything. happens that way She spent her whole life looking for what the fairy tales sold And every heartbreak she'd had led her down that lonesome road To the night at the altar Right behind the bride She looked and called one of the groomsmen, smiling at her from across the aisle. It don't 
just happens that way.